My name is Molly Austin, the head of people here at D2IQ, and it is my pleasure to be speaking with a member of our account development team, Patricia Tarona, as part of our Women of D2IQ series. So, hi, Patricia. It's good to see you. I'm good excited morning, we Molly. get to chat. Um, yeah, so, awesome. So, first question for you you are what we call a boomerang, someone who left D2IQ and decided to come back a bit later down the line uh, in their career. What drew you back to D2IQ? Tell me more about that experience and what it's been like for you and what drew you back. Culture. So, I, you know, I didn't leave because of anything negative. I was lured by, you know, what seemed to be an amazing opportunity, um, and it was, but, uh, you know, selling in the tech space, um, you need a certain amount of enablement and support. Yeah. Um, the learning has to be top notch. And the culture at the, at the company that lured me away was incredible, but I would say the, the time difference made it made it tough. Um, they were based abroad, so they were about seven hours away um, in terms of, you know, later. Um, I needed more guidance, and then it turned out not to be a fit within sort of the amount of enablement and guidance and mentoring I needed, um, being newer to that particular space. Uh, so then went to another really small startup and again, just not not a great culture fit. Um, I really thrive when there is a certain amount of um, support, enablement, both structured and sort of spontaneous, you know. And D2IQ just has that in abundance. Um, everything from you know scheduled learning sessions with the different subject matter experts leading our different teams. And as far as culture goes, it's that generosity that everyone has with their time. It is the, you know, complete lack of condescension that um, people, like, people are so aware to share things in such a way um, to give it context, to make it relevant. I don't have a technical background, um, but let's say I'm, I'm having a conversation that's focused around security or you know the different partners we have in our ecosystem the people have the people here have such a way of breaking it down making it consumable understandable and relevant that it's so empowering and i i would think that that's really unique um when i i'm about to i think later today hop on um, an interview call uh with somebody interviewing for our team and that's always the first thing I say um, when they ask me, you know, what do you love? And I would say it's it's that culture of learning, generosity, sharing, and people are just really cool here. I totally see that. People are so generous with their time here. So I love that. No, I and and you can raise your hand and like when we had our enablement session uh, for at the enterprise team in in Illinois in Chicago, there was literally no dumb question. So what inspires you most about working in the tech industry specifically? So I would say, well, I live in New York and tech, a lot, tech is all around us. Um, I mean, so it's a, it's a tech and finance world, but honestly, for lack of a better statement, I, I still feel like tech is really sexy in that sense of, you know, it's still so, it's at the forefront of innovation um, in terms of, you know, the ideas that are popping out. Even if you aren't in the industry, there will always be some article about something, you know, like whether it's um, blockchain. I have a friend that works at a company for, you know, autonomous vehicles. I mean, if you look at the topics within technology um, and, and what technology does for us and how it's so ingrained and how we can totally take it for granted. But then once it's taken away, like um, the, you know, a few weeks ago, I lost my phone for just an evening. 
and you know I used technology to find my phone and actually somebody had it we connected and I got it back but you know even just that amount of not having it um, and being disconnected and tech is just so pervasive in everything we do you know for better for worse but it even I think like I'm a big outdoorsy person and it even helps us connect to the non-connectedness part of our lives like you know whether it's um, a map so that you don't get lost on a hike um, you know the Garmin that I just mindlessly have going tracking my miles if I'm on a run or you know up hiking um, it's just everywhere and it's so important it can do so much and so I really love that D2 IQ what we do as a company uh, specifically supports innovation. So yeah, I just um, can't get away from it. It's so fast moving. It's awesome. I love that. And I know we jumped in, but jumping back out a little bit, tell me about your role at D2IQ. Um, what is your role? How does it impact the organization? Um, it's an enterprise account uh, development. I'm in enterprise account development. And what I do specifically is prospect um, and our focus currently, I have my own territory, which is the Northeast US. And we are looking to generate pipeline, um, which, is, which is amazing. I, I love the sort of investigative aspect of it. Uh, you sleuth around, you look at your uh, patch of the Global 2000, um, you see if what their developers um, use, the infrastructure, um, you just try to find, I guess, technological alignment with what they are currently using and then the potential for D2IQ to improve upon it and have them run more efficiently. And so what I do is just try to find the ideal customer that um, we could help. I mean, what I love is we are truly here to help. And in my ADR role, we are not about trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. So the investigating is fun. You are really trying to set up calls um, that are relevant, both for them and for you. And I know um, having been in other ADR roles, it can be really nerve wracking um, and I think the reason is because you're just sort of making calls, get the meeting, get the meeting, and it might not be relevant, but here we are all about driving a relationship and, you know, setting not only ourselves up for success, but, you know, our potential customer up for success. Um, we do not market and try to sell to everyone. We have a very specific focus and as an ADR, we stay within our lane and try to get those meetings going. And it's really exciting because we can be, we are the catalysts to what end up being really amazing, interesting conversations. And sometimes those interesting conversations end with, okay, well, we both have to mutually agree to walk away for now because it's not a fit. And that's fine. Um, you still learn a lot. You meet great people. Um, it's, it's like networking with a purpose. And I, I really love that. Again, it's, I actually love cold calling. Um, said no one ever, right? <laughs> exactly, I was gonna say, that might be the first time that I've heard that. <laughs> but I mean, the reason I do is, you know, I, I go into a call armed with information and I'm just so excited, like, please let, let us help you because we really can, based on what I know about you, um, we'd be a perfect fit to help, you know, take away some of the, the pain from your organization. Um, I, don't, I, I, I like to say, I was having this conversation with somebody I, I met this weekend that asked, you know, what do I do? And I said specifically, well, you know, you're, you're a, you're a five-star restaurant. You have to make like amazing dishes. But if you're the head chef, you're not doing your own prep. Um, the essential ingredients you need 
tend to be the same within like the repertoire of your menu. And we are, I guess, your sous chef. Like we collaborate with you. We do the prep so that when the high pressure situation comes, like, you know, your, your diners are there, you have these amazing dishes that we, you know, you have to push out. All your prep is done. Um, we, it's not that your job is any less fulfilling, but you can just jump right ahead to the creation to like, you know, the cool app development. And I, I, I love that. Like we try to help you with that. And I really like the beginning conversations where I just really try to tell them, this is how we can help you. We want to take away the lower value tasks so you can just, you know, build awesome self-autonomous vehicles so that, you know, customers' data is safe when they're on your website. Just like all this cool stuff. I love that way of describing it. I feel like I always struggle to explain, and I always have working in tech, right? Struggle to explain what you do to a non-technical audience. And I love that way of explaining it. And I think I'm going to steal it moving forward. So thank you for that. The next question, how has D2IQ helped you grow as a woman in the tech industry or in your career in general? Specifically to being a woman in the tech industry, like, of course, I don't have the numbers, but I'm sure you know that there's a lower percentage. Um, first of all, I am so proud that our VP of engineering is an amazing woman. Amazing. Published. Amazing. Catherine Southard Neal, our VP of engineering. I'm so proud of, of her, the team she leads. I know that there are other amazing engineers and developers women in technical roles at all levels um, at D2IQ. Um, and we're building up the sales team, you know, with, with me included, myself and Mimo, who does what I do for public sector. Um, as a woman, it is, it's helped me grow from seeing other women thrive in the company, be encouraged and supported. Um, so that's specific to D2IQ. And again, going back to the enablement piece, um, everybody is so helpful in enabling you to learn and to become a subject matter expert, to have the confidence to go to a conference, to get on a call, to meet people like, again, just meeting this person randomly socially. I felt really confident and, in explaining what we do and, you know, it's helped me, um, I guess, get over imposter syndrome. Like I know everyone throws that term around, but it's so real. Like, again, yeah. there just really are not a lot of women selling in tech. And, and I can only tell you from my point of view, um, it's intimidating, you know, uh, going back, like I wasn't, I have an art background. I have a painting background. I have a humanities background. I never thought I would be selling into tech. I never thought I'd have to be explaining, you know, backend development and, and infrastructure and this thing called Kubernetes to people. <laughs> um, but D2IQ has helped me get over uh, that imposter syndrome. Like I know I can do it and I can do it because of the team that I work with. It's just, it's so empowering. Thank you, Patricia, for joining us. You can check out the rest of the interviews from this series at d2iq.com.